Yo, 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 Hi, I'm Vinay Uppal and I'm back for episode number 6 of the Rare series. This episode, I'll be tackling a topic of considerable debate. A uh, lot of you have commented on my previous videos on my opinion on whether loop law is valid in circuits with inductors. The very famous Professor Walter Lewin has made several YouTube videos where he says that the loop law is invalid for such circuits. And I've attached the link to one of his videos in the description. Definitely have a look. Well. I am going to show you in this episode why is it exactly that loop law works for such circuits and why it's absolutely correct physics. So before I start off, I would like to put out a disclaimer. This video is not intended to offend or disrespect Professor Walter Lewin. This video is simply about clearing up a major misconception in physics. And uh, to be frank, my channel is too small and I don't even think Professor Walter Lewin will even come across my video. Uh, let alone respond to my views. Anyway, let's get right to it. So I'm going to be considering a standard RL circuit. I have a battery with EMF E, a resistor of resistance R and an inductor L. So firstly, let me write Faraday's law for this circuit. Faraday's law states that the integral, closed loop integral of the electric field E dot dl is minus d phi by dt. This is Faraday's law. So let me go in the anticlockwise sense, the choice is mine. I have along the battery an electric field that is pointing from the higher potential, the higher terminal to the lower terminal and my dl vector is in the opposite direction. So integral e dot dl across the battery would be minus emf. Then I go across the resistor. Electric field will be pointing in the same direction as the current, which is also the same direction as dl vector. So I'll have plus ir. And along the inductor, how will I write E dot DL? So this is a pure inductor. Now what is a pure inductor? It means it has no resistance. So resistivity is zero. Now I know Ohm's law states that J is equal to sigma E. J is current density, sigma is conductivity. So I can write E is equal to rho J, where rho is one over sigma resistivity. And because rho is zero for finite currents, I'll have the net electric field inside the inductor is zero. And therefore, the, the left hand side for the inductor is going to be 0 and on my right hand side minus d phi by dt I know inside the inductor flux is going to be Li and therefore d phi by dt is going to be L di by dt. So I'll have minus L di by dt on the right hand side and this is my circuit equation. So this is absolutely correct. And this is what Professor Walter Lewin also says. I absolutely agree with him at that point that Faraday's law is the correct way to do this. The issue is with writing loop law. Now that you've understood how to write Faraday's law in the circuit, let's go and write loop law and let's see how it compares with Faraday's law. So let's write loop law. The loop law states that the sum of voltage changes along a loop, around a loop, is zero. So if I go across the battery, I'm going from the lower to the higher terminal. So my change in voltage would be E. Then I'm, then I'm going across the resistance. The voltage will drop by an amount of IR. And once I go across the inductor, and this is the point of controversy in the debates that that have happened in the past that as I go across the inductor usually in textbooks they say that the voltage will drop by an amount equal to L di by dt and now we've traveled the entire loop and this should be zero. Recollect what did we get by Faraday's law. So this is loop law and Faraday's law was minus E plus IR is equal to minus LDR by DT. 
and of course you can see that they are both mathematically equivalent. So we've already established that Faraday's law is correct physics, but what about the loop law? What's the issue with the loop law? The issue is, as Professor Lewin points out in his video, is that integral e dot dl is not zero, whereas loop law or Kirchhoff's loop law states that integral e dot dl is zero. So obviously, integral e dot dl being zero is not valid for RL circuits, and I agree with him on that point. Here e is the net electric field obviously this is zero it's not valid for rl circuits because we know it is equal to the rate of change of flux but then why does loop law work is it just a mathematical coincidence in my experience of teaching and studying physics for many years there are very very few coincidences that occur in physics if you see an equation that is seemingly only mathematically coincidental there is every chance that there is some deeper physics to it than what you realize. So I am about to tell you why loop law is actually correct even when we look at it from a physics point of view. Let's take a look. So like I said integral e dot dl where e is a net field is of course not zero but we know that if I have only conservative fields the integral of a conservative field along closed loop is of course zero. That is the definition of a conservative field. So I'm representing conservative field by EC. If I look at a pure inductor, we saw that the net field inside it should be zero. But we know from Faraday's law that there is a non-conservative electric field generated inside an inductor because of changing magnetic field. So what is causing the net field to be zero? Clearly, there must be some other conservative electric field cancelling out this non-conservative field. So, I should be able to write my net field as conservative plus non-conservative and this should be zero. I am using uh, ENC as my variable for non-conservative field generated by the mag changing magnetic field. Now, let us write integral E conservative dot DL over the closed loop is zero. And let's see what we get. So once again, I go across the battery. I have a conservative field here. I'm going across from the lower terminal to the higher terminal. So the integral will be minus EMF. Then I have a conservative electric field in the direction of the current along the resistor, which will give me plus IR. And then when I go across the inductor, let me just write that as plus integral EC dot dl and this should be zero this is across the inductor now this is where the magic happens i have integral ec dot dl as negative of integral non-conservative dot dl because the sum is zero but what is the integral of non-conservative dot dl that is nothing but minus d phi by dt by faraday's law and d phi by dt was ldi by dt so this becomes LDI by dt and therefore I have minus E plus IR plus LDI by dt is 0 and this is nothing but my loop law and this is why loop law works. We are not writing integral E dot dl 0 that is not, that's not what we are writing. We are writing E conservative dot dl 0. So what happens is there is a conservative electric field generated inside the inductor and whose potential difference is actually L by dt. So there is a potential corresponding to the conservative field inside the inductor and when we write a voltage drop of L by dt across the inductor, we are not writing integral E dot dl, we are writing integral E conservative dot dl, we are writing the potential drop, the potential corresponding to the conservative field inside the inductor. So you can see now why loop law works, it is not only mathematically correct, but it's also physically correct. So hopefully this puts an end to the debate. Is Professor Walter Lewin right that um, Kirchhoff's voltage law is not valid? Well, Professor Walter Lewin defines Kirchhoff's voltage law as integral E dot DL is zero where E is the net field and in that case he's absolutely correct. But like I said, the loop law is not integral E dot DL is zero, the loop law is E conservative dot DL is zero. 
and whether you want to call this as Kirchhoff's loop law or whether it's simply loop law, the name doesn't really matter. In fact, go ahead and call it by my name. Go ahead and call it Oppel's loop law. I don't mind. I'll be very flattered. But the point is, you understand that loop law is not e dot dl is zero. It is e conservative dot dl is zero. So as long as you understand that, it's perfectly fine to use loop law. That's it for today. See you guys. Good night.